and welcome to Chair Interval Training, brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs, the Yellow Springs Senior Center, and me, Lynn Hardman. Um, I wanted to use a few ideas today, or present them to you, for some at-home strength training equipment that using items that you may already have. So a lot of us are using these recyclable or reusable uh, cloth bags when we go grocery shopping like at Tom's Market. We're so fortunate to have a wonderful grocery store um, here locally. Uh, that, you could fill that cloth bag with cans and make it the desired weight to do your strength training. Or better yet, bags of things like whole grains that are rather dense. So think brown rice or lentils. Um, another thing you might have that you wouldn't think of as a strength training um, device would be one of these like string bags. So again, you could fill that up, make it the desired weight, grab the strings or whatever and use that as your weight. Um, and then last but certainly not least, this is a wonderful uh, home strength training piece of equipment or equipment you can make easily. You could take some old, not old, I would buy brand new tube socks, knee high, and you could fill them full of, these are filled with very uh, fine small grain rice. A friend made them for me a long time ago and um, I would keep the rice in an old stocking perhaps, tie it off if you have it loose and you do want it loose. And, um, and you can make a long tube sock. These weigh about three pounds each, but you can make a long tube sock weigh about five pounds. So I'm gonna use these today and show you a couple things you could do. And the other cool trick is, what if it's rice that you put inside of your clean, new, no holes, please, tube sock, and if you're not confident that the weave is gonna keep the rice in, you could, again, use a, a old nylon stocking or a thin sock inside of a sock. But if it's just rice and no um, other strange materials, it heats up in the microwave and it makes a nice little neck warmer or a, a, a tummy warmer when you're not feeling well. So let's get to it though. Hey, and so you'll need some weights. You could use cans or fill a bag with some stuff. And uh, later on, you can make your sock weights, but, but we will need a sturdy chair. And I want to remind you, if anything feels like it's too much for you today, you're right. Slow it down, reduce the range of motion, go back to the last thing that we were doing that suited you and um, just go at your own pace. If it hurts, don't do it. All right, we're going to use these hand weights today as well as a rubber band. If you don't have that, um, cans are good in your cupboard. But um, I don't like them because if you drop them on your toe, it really hurts. Whereas these, they don't hurt. <laughs> and they're multi-purpose. So I'm going to put those right there, get some music on, and just encourage you to move. Move your body. Must move for good health. <laughs> All right. That was a long lecture. So we don't have to exercise as long today. <laughs> You can begin in your seat or on your feet. It's up to you. At any time, if you feel out of balance or just something's not quite right, trust your instincts and return to your chair. You'll get a good workout just moving in your seat if you want. So we're gonna just start out with a basic march. Swinging those arms in cross crawl fashion. While I'm recording this session, the polar vortex is upon us, and it is really cold outside. So I hope you're staying warm and safe, but still getting out to enjoy some fresh air here and there. All right, let's see how it feels to widen out our stance. You always want to stay close enough to your chair that you can reach out and touch it as a balance check but I'm gonna come out in front just so you can see what's happening a little bit easier with my body. Hip width are wider and just start rocking your weight right and left. See how it feels to draw that shoulder up closer to your ear. 
and maybe roll it. If that feels good, you could increase the range of motion gradually by lifting the elbow or even making a big arm circle. Good. All right, let's drop those arms again and maybe reach across your body. Pulling that navel in and stretching the crown of your head up. Long posture through the spine, whether you're seated or standing, is really good. It helps us to move with greater ease and breathe with greater ease. If it feels good, you can reach slightly overhead. Or down. Let's, let's take a moment to just breathe and open our chest. Inhale, exhale. Good. Inhale and repeat. You could do that arm movement a little bit faster, shorten the range of motion if it hurts. Make it bigger if everything feels fine. Good. All right, this is a good time, since we moved around a little, to preview a couple of the patterns we're going to use today. We've done them both before, but not in a while, so here we go. We're over here on the right side of our chair, and we're marching with a right foot, right foot. We're going to do a rock step pattern, or several patterns. A rock step is where we take that right foot forward and back, forward and back, or say front, together, front, together. So we're marching like that. We can also take it to the side. We can do it four times to the side, two more to the side. We can march it back, back, together. Good. Two more to the back. And then to the side again. Good. We could do this to the front in twos. Side, two. Back, two. Excellent. Side. We could break it down to one each direction. One to the front. Side, back. We could do it double time. A little faster, front, side, back, side. Pump those arms and you see that pattern. You can take it at tempo or you could try it at double time for some agility practice. That's one of the patterns we'll use. The other one is for all, more about balance, but we'll introduce agility too. It's called two and two. So over here on the right side, Make sure you're a little behind your chair with a safe, clear path to slide behind it, able to touch it, use it for your balance check. We're gonna lift the right knee two times, and then we're gonna slide over to the left two times. Lift the left knee, slide to the right. So it's up, two, over, two. We've done this before. While you're lifting your knee, if you don't need that chair, Practice your balance, knowing you can grab it if you need it, or you can tap your toe down if you like. We could do this in twos, or we could use fours, so four lifts. And then four smaller steps so we don't get too far away from our chair. Four lifts, and four smaller steps. And we can even do that quicker later on. I just wanted to put that pattern picture in your mind. We're going to transition to our seat for some dynamic warm-up stretches. In the beginning, when we're doing our stretches, we're not going for a great range of motion. We're just getting ready for more activity. So get your body to the front of your chair if you're not already there. Touch the chair legs with your feet. That way you know where it is. As you get your hips back, keep your head up. And sit down slow, keeping your weight equal in both right and left legs. This is a good time to get a sip of water, step into the side, leaning to the side, bracing with your arm, and bracing with your abdominals is always a good way to protect your back as you get water or your weights or anything down low in life, not just in exercise classes.
All right. So it's very good to stay hydrated, especially when it's very cold outside. So it helps everything work better, but especially our balance and our cognitive thinking, um, executive function, clear mindedness. Okay. So sitting tall at the edge of your seat, pull that navel in and let's take a chest opener as you breathe in through your nose, ideally, and open the chest, maybe lift the chin ever so slightly, not too much. And then exhale, close the shoulders and chest, stretch through your back, stretch the palms of the hands. And let's take a moment to sit tall again, tap those toes, lifting them as high as we can up off the floor. Same with the fingers bouncing off of our lap. Wrists and ankles are very important for our everyday activities. Take those out and in. And lift your hands in the air. And kind of rotate through your shoulders. Kind of feels like the funky chicken. Good. All right. I felt that a little bit right here in my shins, in my ankles, the tops of my feet. Now, let's sit tall and stretch out our right leg. Stretch out our left leg. See if it feels good to stretch them in the air. And dorsiflex your toes up towards the ceiling. Good. Pull your navel in. Brace, but breathe. And then push that opposite arm out with the leg. You could do it on the floor, but do it with your best posture. Pulling that navel in, sitting tall, stretching the crown of the head up. And let's get a little bit of flexibility in that ankle with a point flex point, point flex point, point flex point. Good. Coordination challenge. Let's try doing a flex point flex. Flex point flex. Flex point flex instead of the other one. <laughs> okay, stretching out with that right leg extended, supporting our long, strong spine, hinging forward and reaching forward, looking forward, pulling the navel in, lengthening the spine, lift the toes and fingers a little higher. Ah, and then push the pedal or the sole of the foot down. Good. Let's try that left leg extension, supporting on the right lap. Inhale up. Oh, if something hurts, bring it in. Shorten that lever. Shoulders can be tricky sometimes. So leaning forward, supporting here, stretching forward gently. Lift the toes and the fingers a little higher towards the sky. And then push the fingers and toes down towards the ground. Excellent. All right. Let's bounce those heels this time off the floor. Hands on your lap. Bounce the heels of your hands off of your lap. Good. And let's try and take those heels and elbows out and in. Excellent. Now just walk your heels and toes out a bit. Sitting with the openness here. Toes and knees point in the same direction. We can get a gentle inner thigh stretch. And I'm going to ask you now, before we get going and trying to move our body to get some good cardiovascular exercise while we work on agility, I'm going to ask you on a scale of one being lowest intensity of exercise and 10 being maximal, how are you feeling now? Maybe a two? Our target for the next 10 minutes or so is going to be a four to a seven or an eight. Four feels like, oh, I feel great. I could keep doing this all day. Eight feels like I got to slow down, but I can continue. A 10 would be, I can't do anything. Now you can do this pattern in your chair with the right foot marching and rock step forward for four, three, or you could be standing, two, but stand right near your chair and to the side, side. Good, we're doing four each direction and back. This is our rock step pattern for agility. Side, four, three, 
two, one, front, two, we're breaking it down, side, two, back, two, side, two, okay, one each way, front, side, good, back, pick your feet up, side, do it again, front, side when we get to the front let's try double time if you wish here we go now front and side and back and side keep going pump those arms excellent if you want roll your hands if you need that chair it's right there excellent if you're rolling your hands forward when you get back to the front roll them backward All right, march it out. How you doing? You ready to try that same little bit on the left? If you need to catch your breath, go ahead. Slow your roll or sit down. Otherwise, standing or seated tall, able to see and touch your chair. Let's march on that left foot. Excellent. Feels good to move, doesn't it? Now rock forward. Three more. Two, one, side, four, three, two, one, back, four, three, two, one, side, four, three, two, front, four, two this time, breaking it down. Side, two, excellent, back, two, all right, side, two, now one each way, front, side, pick those feet up, back, side, staying at tempo, and if you like, when we get back to the front, we'll go double time again, quick feet now, front, side, back, Pump those arms, front, side, back. Touch your chair, front, side, back. If you need to prove to yourself it's there. Good, roll those hands again. How you doing? Switch directions with the hands. Whoop. I almost lost my coordination roll there. <laughs> How are you doing on our one to 10 skill? Can you talk out loud? You must be able to. It's, you must move, but you must be able to move enough oxygen to be able to talk. Let's try that again. This time, we'll do it one rock step, then we'll double up, and then we'll get to fours, and then we'll do our fours, and we'll do it double time. Okay, march one on your right, on the right side of your chair. Fast posture, right, right, ready, rock, step, one each way. Front, side, back, side, two each way. Front, front, good, side, 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 and back, back, good, side. All right, four to the front, four. Three, two, one, side, four. You're with me, I hope so. Two more to the side, back, four, three, two, good, one, side. When we are done here, we're gonna do four quick steps, front side, back side, you ready? Pass feet, four, three, Two, side, four, three, two, back, four, three, two, side, four, three, two. Good, add some arms if you like. Just pushing in the direction that your legs going. Front, side, back, side. If you wanted more, you could do that over your head. 
but always make sure you don't wander away from your chair. Woo, take a break. Woo. We're gonna do that one more time on the left. So come on over to the left side, catch your breath. Make sure you can see and touch your chair. Get that left foot marching. One rock step front, side, back, side. Two down, two front. Excellent, and side, back, side. Double up for front. Three, two, best posture. One, side, four, three, pump in those arms if you want. Back, four, three, two, one, side. Last four at tempo, and if you like, we'll try it double time to the front. Ready? Fast feet, front, four, three, two, side, four, three, two, back. Excellent, side. Adding arms if you like, push front, side, back, side, front, side, back, side, front. We're pushing our arms the same direction as our leg. Uh-oh, let's just stay with that. One more time around if you can. Oh, I reverted to ones. Did you see that? I know some of you noticed you're very, very observant. <laughs> okay, catch your breath. Before we get seated and change the focus of our exercise to one of muscular strength, let's slow our breathing, get that under control, and maybe get a calf stretch if you're standing. If you're standing or seated, Move your, right, your left heel back a little bit at a time to where you can press the heel to the ground, keeping the knee straight, lean forward ever so slightly. If you're seated, your knee can't be straight, so. But you should feel a gentle lengthening at the back of the lower leg, maybe in the heel or the front of the ankle. Some people feel that differently. And we can do the right leg as well, gradually, Walk that right leg back. Paste your heel to the ground and lean forward. Excellent. Relax. We're going to transfer to our chair. We're going to start out with just a couple squats. Squatting is our best body weight strengthener for hips and thighs. And we're working on balance. So get your weight equal in both legs. Get your legs close to the chair where you can feel it. Get your tailbone back and keep your chin and chest up as you flex down as far as you comfortably can without committing to the chair. However, if you lost your balance and your feet are touching the chair, you're going to land safely. So do your best. Some people actually sit down in between, but whether you do that or you just tap the chair or just goes low as it feels comfortable. You think of pushing through all parts of your feet. And think of squeezing your hips forward to take a load off of your knees. All right, let's get a sip of water. You know, do you know that uh, also what I like about squatting is it uses so many muscles and it's almost aerobic if you're carrying enough weight. Now, let's use our weights, whether you had hand weights lying around, which by the way, you can buy some at our local do Dollar General. I saw them when I was in there getting something recently. They don't have any, uh, I don't think they currently have any rubber bands or balls, but we'll probably stock balls soon, or you know, you can probably order this stuff online safely too. All right, so grab your weights, whatever they are, and let's take both in our right hand. Let's say you're having grip problems. What I like about these is you can just practically balance them on your on your arm. Yeah? So, but I'm gonna grab mine because I'm gonna use my one arm row 
leaning forward and rowing. So we have a lot of strength in our upper back. If you want a more advanced one on the row, you can come over to the right side with your right leg back, supporting your back, leaning halfway towards your left thigh, and row. Now, with your left heel digging into the ground and your right ball of your foot and toes pushing into the floor, think about getting up. You don't even have to get up to make this a relevant and effective lower body strengthener. But if you have the strength to get up, you can do a hold or a half lunge while you're rowing. Keep that belly braced. I'm gonna show you another alternative. Just standing in this split stance while we're doing the one arm row is excellent balance work. So you can do a full on lunge, you could do standing and just row, or you could do seated while you're rowing and digging your heels in, or you could just lean forward and do the row. Lots of options. We're gonna do the other side, but first let's do something in between. Sitting at the edge of your chair, one weight in each hand, sit tall, bring your knees together, Paste your elbows on your body. Try to keep your spine long and straight and still as you raise your right arm and lower your left, keeping the elbows right pasted to the body. What else I like about these socks is if you do plop your knee, it's not gonna hurt. So that would be some good homework if to fill up a sock with <laughs> You know, white rice is very, very inexpensive and you're better off eating brown rice. Anything that would be nice and weighty. And that if you use rice, especially a smaller grain, it heats up well in the microwave. Okay, were you able to keep your body still while you did that? Now, we're gonna do something similar, but we're gonna move the whole torso. So pull the navel in, tuck your tailbone under, and lean back. You can just keep those weights near your heart center as you slide back, perhaps squeezing your knees together without knocking them. Working the abdominals. Breathe as you come up. Now, if you choose, we can do an alternate chest shoulder press. Bringing that hand closer to the heart. Adding a little bit of rotation through our torso. If you wanted, you could do both. And that's, well, might be twice as hard. <laughs> Excellent. All right. We could also just lean back into our chair and try a little chest press. Kind of look up towards the ceiling and create a rainbow with your hand weights. A smaller rainbow is going to be easier with the elbows bent. A large rainbow is going to be harder. Working the chest and the fronts of the shoulders. Excellent. Relax. Okay. We're going to do both of your weights in the left hand. And we're gonna start out, I'm gonna show you all the variations, just as we did on the right. Seated at the front edge of your seat, leaning slightly forward, supporting, just reaching for those left toes and rowing. Breathe. There's no wrong way to breathe, but ideally, your breath is um, natural for you. And we're not holding our breath. Good, so that's one variation. Or you might have chosen the split stance. I'm losing my weights here. Um, with that left leg back, toe tucked under. Right foot forward. Digging those feet in. To think about standing up, but not if you don't wish to. That's a big exercise. Really, truly. 
Or you might choose to do this standing at the left side of your chair with the left leg back in a balanced position, split stance, using your chair as needed, but balancing. And the hardest option would be to do a lunge as you row. And I didn't show the other option of just lunging without the rowing if your arm or shoulder got tired because usually the smaller upper body muscles fatigue quicker. So, you know what you can also do with these, which is what I like? Well, if you're seated, you could put it, sling it off your leg and do a leg extension. Actually, that would be better off sitting way back in your chair and strengthening these quadricep muscles. Yeah, you can do that. Alternating, pulling the navel in, making sure the spine is supported. You could, seated or standing, kind of edge off to the side and do some leg extensions with a little bit of hip abduction. One pound out there at the end of your leg makes a huge difference. So now, I'm, I won't show you the, the left side because if you had cans, that's not gonna work, is it? Don't even try it. All right. Um, lots of other things you can do, but maybe make some of these. And call me or email me if you want to uh, have me explain that again. But go ahead and tuck these away under your chair. Take a moment to get a sip of water, and then we'll move on to another aerobic interval. Okay. This is our two and two pattern. Are you ready to move more? We strengthen our arms and our legs a lot and our abdominals. Now let's strengthen our heart. But you know, while we're moving our, our, through our aerobic intervals, we're also strengthening our legs quite a bit and a little bit our arms as well. So sit tall or stand tall. I'm gonna show it in the chair, but those of you who know you wanna be standing, you know you. Go ahead and get up. Come on over to this right side of the chair, best posture. We're gonna do two knee lifts. You're slightly behind your chair, so you can slide to the left, and two left knee lifts. Slide to the right. So two up, two over, that's it. Two up, keep moving, whether you're in your chair or standing in the air, I'm gonna transition and join you. Standing. Over, up. Remember, try to keep the core braced, but breathing. We can tap our toe down on the ground if we need a balance check. We could just touch our chair lightly. Make sure you can see and touch it. Up with the arms overhead. One is a good way to start. We'll always add a little bit more cardio demand. So if you're looking for more, make your range of motion bigger, add a little fake jump, like you're skipping. Skip, only two times on the same leg. Up to the tippy toe if you really want more. If your balance is rock steady, you can do both arms. Conversely, you could bring it in if you want less. But work on that balance. Great. One more of these, each side. Excellent. Take a break. Get a deep breath. And let's do this with a different locomotor movement. How about we try hamstring curls? So make sure you're behind your chair a bit. We're going to do two left hamstring curls. Keep the knee down and dorsal flex that foot as if you're kicking your butt. Some folks are limber enough or their limb lengths and proportions of their body allow them to actually do that. But it's not a goal to kick your butt. You can add a little bicep curl if you like. 
Or you could just pull or push up. Because remember, arms overhead will always add to the cardio demand. If you're looking for more. Good. Up. Up. We could check our balance by touching that chair or tapping our toe down in between. Good. Do you want to double this up and try four lifts? Four, three, two, over. Four little steps. Three, two, four hamstring curls right. Now we're balancing a little longer, aren't we? Good. Four hand straight curls. Over. Don't get too far away from your chair now. You never know when you're going to need a balance check. Up. Good. Let's do one more on the right side here. And then we're going to... Take a deep breath and try this with hip abduction. So two and over, lift and over. Pull the navel in. We're working on hip strength while we balance here. Up. If you wanted to add more, you could try arms, but keep that body centered and tall and strong. Try four here. Four, three, Two, you got your chair if you need it. Four little steps. Good, try four here. Four, three, two. If you want more, go low with your little side steps. Up, up, up. Now, down, down, down. Last set of hips. I know I'm feeling that, how are yours? If you want to stretch them a little, take a deep breath. We're going to do this one more way. We're going to add toe raises. Slide to the right, up on your tippy toes. Slide to the left, up on your tippy toes. Slide to the right. I just kept kicking that. I had to move it up with both hands if your balance is rock steady. One, if you need a balance check. Or hands down if you don't want as much cardiovascular inverts, or you just don't feel like your breath is there for you. Awesome. Let's try four little steps. Three, two, four tippy toes. Up, up, up. Four little steps slow. If you want to try this a little faster, let's do it here. Four, three, two, one. Up, 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 up. Over, 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 over. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. You can make it little. Boop. Over. Up. Over. Up. Excellent. One more time. Woo! Take a breath. March it out. How are you doing on our one to 10 perceived exertion scale? All right, I hope so. All right, we're gonna do that one more way. Instead of lifting, I'm having trouble, this is an artery band. <laughs> Instead of lifting, we're gonna tap. We're gonna reach our foot out to the front as far as we can down or tap. And then we'll go over, over. Nice and slow here at first. Good. Now, really stretch a little faster. Tap, tap, over. Reach as far as you can with that toe, keeping the body tall, but sinking down into the support leg. Tap it out, tap, tap. Good, last time to the front. This time, keep the body straight, reach out to the side, tap. Stay low if you want. We're just tapping, we're not stepping. We're keeping that body 
centered over our hips. Good. Feel that in your legs? Last time to the side. Now let's try front and side. Front, side, over. Front, side, over. <laughs> Front, side, over. Front, side, over. I'm laughing at me. Front, side. Okay. Do you think we could do this? Double up, so two to the front, two, two to the side, two, four little steps, four, three, two, two to the front, two to the side, and four little steps. How about double time, two to the front, double time, side, four, three, two, one, front, front, side, side, four, three, two, one, that's hard. Oh, that's hard, quick feet. I think we killed that pattern. <laughs> Meaning, you know, we're going to put it to rest. <laughs> and we're going to change the focus to one of strength again, this time using our band. But first, let's get our breathing and our heart rate slowed a bit. Some mindful breaths in through the nose. <sighs> Maybe just sidle up to the right side of your chair and work on balance. Stretching up to the tippy toes, feet narrow. Good. Then try pulling up on that right foot to the a kickstand position. So just a little weight in the ball of your foot, most of your weight in the left. Come up to your tiptoes, strengthening the calf. Good. And then do the other foot in the kickstand mode. Most of your weight in the right now. And come up. That's a deceptively good balance and calf strength. So, all right, that should have brought our heart and breathing rate down a little while we strengthen our calves. We're gonna get our feet close to the chair, strengthen our hips if you like with a few more squats. Get that head up as if you're balancing one of those cans from your covered on your head, but don't do that, please. That would not be comfortable or safe. Good. Down with control, up with a little power, squeezing those cheeks together behind you. Ready for one more takeoff? And let's get seated. Ah, oh, it's a good time to get a sip of water. Step to the side, lean to the side, support your back. Slow, mindful movements will lower your risk of injuries. I really enjoyed a lunch and, or it's called a lunch and meet via the senior center. If you haven't visited their website recently, do that. Um, I think it's Yellow's. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a it's in my favorites, so I just click on it. But the Yellow Springs Senior Center, and if you just Google that or use your search engine Bing or whatever. Um, you'll find their website and then one of the pages is called calendar and you can click on the calendar events and it'll give you more information about how to join them virtually so last this February lunch and meet was with um, our Miami Township Fire and Rescue chief Colin Altman and he gave us a tour of the new fire station it was really cool and also gave us a lot of great tips for safety in our homes and as we go out and about. So um, check that website out, Yellow Springs Senior Center. All right, we're going to use our tubing. I'm going to check my notes, get another quick sip of water, see what I have planned for you. Oh, yeah, we're going to combine some upper body exercises with some lower body exercises as an option. But remember, you could do just one or the other, put them together, or do neither. <laughs> We're gonna start out with a basic lat pull down. So grab your tubing or your flat band, and I'm gonna grab mine 
loop it back around so that I have about shoulder width of the tautness to my tube between my hands. If you're going to squat, you're going to want to scooch back in your chair so that your heels touch. That way, if you lose your balance and your hands are occupied, your, your hips will land where they need to. So bring that band up, keep the tension on it as you pull it apart and squeeze your shoulder blades together behind you. Think of reaching towards where the ceiling meets the wall and then pointing your elbows down to where the floor meets the wall. So we're moving through a diagonal, rowing, strengthening the upper back, rear shoulders, and the biceps, and we're breathing. Now, if you want, you can add your squat. Your hips will be down while your hands are up. Your hips will be up as your hands come down. This way you're in a good position to get your hips back. Keep your weight in all parts of your feet. And put those two movements together. Or if your arms are already tired, you can do more squats. If everything's tired, take a break. We're going to switch by putting this band behind our body so that we, all, we can use the opposing upper body muscles to the upper back, the chest, fronts of the shoulders, and the triceps. So, now, this is a nice long band. When I put it behind my back, under my arms, there's not very much challenge or tension. So, you want to put your desired amount of challenge or tension on the tube by grabbing it closer to the shoulders. Scooch back or to the front of your chair for this one. Feet together, sitting tall. See if you've got the right amount of tension on your tubing. While you straighten the elbows in front, breathing out, inhale, squeeze that lemon between your shoulder blades. Excellent. Feels good. If you want, we can lean back, pull that navel in like you're zipping up your tightest pants. This is hard. If it's too hard, you could keep your hands in front while you lean back in your abs slide and then open here. But if you want to make it more challenging, you're opening your arms back as you move back, forward as you move forward. Excellent. If you want to finish off with a little leg lift, extension there, and a little crisscross, breathe. And then let's switch legs. How about eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Ooh, my upper body is spent. Let's give it a break, shall we? All right, take that tube out from behind you. Got a big U-shaped Let's step on it with equal length on either side. Come to the edge of your seat here. Crisscross those tubes. Let's see, what did I have in mind? Ah, yes. We're gonna rest the upper body for a minute. So just rest your arms with the crisscross tubing on your lap. Sit tall and open out that right leg using the right hip abduction muscles. Try to keep the body straight and tall in the middle. Breathe. Now we're gonna add, if you like, an opposite one arm row. Keep the body straight and strong and tall. So we're doing opposite. Let's do one more opposite and then let's try doing same side. So try right arm, right leg. And that's going to use some different abdominal muscles. Sitting tall, breathing. Woo! Excellent. Relax. Release the tension on your tube. Take that off. I think we're about done with that. So you can toss it off to the side if you like. Step to the side, lean to the side, and get another sip of water. Check. I know I talked a lot about how we can make our own home weights near the beginning of class. So I'm a little just double checking my time. Oh, good. 
We have time to do a little bit more exercise if you wish. I think we'll come back to our rock step pattern, but we're going to switch it up a little for leg strength and balance and uh, fall prevention strategies. So here's what it looks like in the chair, sitting at the front edge of your chair. We're going to do some step outs. Step front and put your weight on it. Step side, put your weight on it. Step back, put your weight on it. That's what it looks like. Now, this is going to be slow, so not aerobic. So if you want to join us um, on your feet, make sure you get on the right side of your chair and that your left hip is near that back of the chair. You will see it with your peripheral vision. We're going to step forward, but we're going to keep our weight in both legs and sink down. Then we're going to step side, weight equal in our squat stance, step back weight in both feet, sinking a little lower if you feel comfortable, confident, lifting our foot up off of the ground so we're on one foot in between. This step out pattern over here on the right. Excellent. If you want to bring it in, we'll do it on the left. Shake your legs out. If you were losing your balance, You'll need to move into a step out to quickly, but we're not going to practice at speed, okay? We're working on strength, because strength is a big part of the balance, and we're rehearsing it in our head. So sidle up to the left part of your chair, and we're going to step forward with that left foot and sink down. You got your chair if you need it, and then step out to the side, weight equal in both feet. Step to the back. Hinging down lower because this uses more muscles and strengthens our thighs and our hips, which can lead to greater bone density, so we're less likely to break a hip or a leg should we fall. But the other thing is we need that range of motion because the lower we get when we're about to fall, the less likely we are to hurt our head. So being able to hinge down low and tucking your head and keeping your elbows in um, is a good anti-fall or anti-injury um, exercise, as well as one for flexibility. So we're not gonna do it today, but it's a very good idea to practice getting up and down safely off of the floor. So if you have a nice thick rug and then put a sticky mat on top of it, you want, you could even wear knee pads to just practice getting up and down off of the ground. It's a really good strategy for should you fall, you'll stay strong too. So, and you wanna have several ways to get up and down off of the ground. That's a whole other class. So, if you're on your feet, let's stretch a bit. Let's walk that right left leg back again. Press the heel down to the ground. And relax. Then the other leg. Remember, while we do these calf stretches, you want to pace the heel onto the ground. Keep the toe pointing straight ahead as much as possible. Keep the knees straight as much as possible. And I highly recommend, if you've got a door or a sturdy wall, doing a straight and a bent knee calf stretch. So watch this leg of mine. If you've got a wall, you can do a straight knee calf stretch, leaning forward, putting most of our weight in that leg. Or you could bring that foot in a couple of inches, put the the heel on the ground and bend that knee. Most of my weight is in that foot. I can lift the other one. And that bent knee stretch is gonna, you might feel a little on the side or the front of the ankle. And that's a really good secondary calf stretch. Speaking of stretches, we're gonna sit and stretch a bit. All right, so. You don't even have to squat, but do please get your feet close to the chair as you sit down slowly, mindfully. 
You could even do a yoga chair pose. Try not to let your knees drift inward. Try to make a long, strong line from your tailbone up through your shoulders and your ears and draw your biceps up towards your ears and get seated. Ooh. Just holding that pose made me warm, which is a good thing when it's so cold outside. And again, I know I said this before, but staying hydrated is a good thing when it's super cold, especially for an extended period of time, as it has been. Okay. While we're seated here, let's see. Excellent. I'm gonna switch to our slow down song. This is a cover band of a Dayton band called Heat Wave. So it's not the original artist, but it's a pretty good cover. Can you hear that? And if you haven't tried my line dancing class yet, as you get your breath under control, sit up towards the front edge of your chair, sit up tall, and just breathe in through your nose. Fill your lungs from the bottom to the top and exhale through your mouth or your nose at your own pace. So as you breathe mindfully, get your breathing under control. I want to encourage you to try my line dancing class. You could dance in your chair and learning these new patterns with some mild amount of aerobic activity is good for your brain too and your balance. But even doing it in your chair, you'd be surprised, is a pretty good workout. So um, this whole month of February, we're doing all Ohio bands or Ohio-based songs. So um, this is one we're gonna not use because it's so slow. <laughs> all right, your breathing should be fine now. I hope you're feeling fine. Take a deep breath as you open your spine to a gentle arch. And then exhale as you close. And this is another very simple but effective spine limbering stylized seated yoga. Opening as we breathe in like a sway back cow. Closing as we exhale like an arched back cat. Excellent. Ah, we can do another modified seated yoga pose. We could do a modified pigeon pose for the hip rotators, crossing right ankle over left, sitting tall, and coaxing that right knee to open down toward the ground. If you're more flexible and you can stack the right ankle on top of the left thigh, that's where you're at. And as you exhale, whether you're crossed ankle over ankle or ankle on your lap, hinge forward supporting your body and deepening and developing this hip rotator cuff stretch. Inhale, sit tall, and let's try that left leg modified pigeon pose. So sometimes one side will be less or more flexible than the other, and that's quite natural. You don't need to do both sides equal opposite. Pay attention to your body and choose stretches that work for you, just as you choose exercises that work best for you. Relax as you hinge forward, deep breath, filling your belly, filling your lungs, and exhale. Good. Now, let's keep that left leg crossed however it is, or uncross it, but lean back in our chair and draw that knee up toward the chest. Take a deep breath. Exhale. And if you like, let your head bow forward gently toward the knee. You don't need to touch. It's not important. Stretching the back of the hip, back of the neck. Pull the navel in, and let's try that other leg. Drawing it in. 
Now, if you have a hip replacement and you were told that not to hinge or flex it that far, then don't. If you like this stretch and you want to let the head bow down, go for it gently. Excellent. Let's open our legs as we did in that initial stretch with the knees and the toes pointing the same way. This time, we're not just getting ready. Our muscles and tendons and ligaments are a lot warmer. So at the end, it's a good time to hold your stretches perhaps a little longer and let them develop. If you want, you can take your right shoulder from your back pocket to your front pocket. And then same with the left. Excellent. Keeping this wide stance, you could turn sideways in your chair with that left hip ever so slightly off of the seat. You can hinge forward, supporting on your right lap. And get that left leg back, relax, let the knee drift down. Let the arm drift up, or if that shoulder doesn't like to be extended, shorten the lever, but open your heart upward. And then exhale and stretch through the left side. Take your time. Relax out of that. And let's turn the other way. Take your time. If we do this, um, I like to call this the pose of, this is another modified chair yoga stance. You could call it the pose of the dancer because it stretches a lot of the same muscles, but we don't have to balance while we're doing it. So inhale, extend if you wish, open the spine if it feels good to you. Exhale and stretch through that right side of your body. Take your time, fill your lungs fully feels good to breathe. All right, so let's scooch back in our chair just for a moment and take a few mindful breaths, supporting our spine, resting hands in our lap. And I'm gonna tell you a little story. <laughs> While you mindfully breathe through your nose, filling your lungs from the bottom to the top, exhale and relax. Close your eyes if you like, um, and just keep breathing. I had originally planned, because this show will air the week of Mardi Gras, or Fat Tuesday, which is the day before Ash Wednesday, which is the beginning of Lent. Um, but I, whether you observe Lent or not, I just love uh, Mardi Gras music, and I've had a lot of trouble with uh, things, technical things, and darn it, I've lost a great deal of my music, so we couldn't play Mardi Gras music. But as you breathe in, I want to remind you that we are, the days are lengthening, and yes, hospitalization rates are going down, but deaths are still pretty high as I record this. So keep wearing your mask. Keep exercising safely, soundly at home, or make an exercise walking dates when the weather permits outside, watching your footing. Um, we'll be able to do more and more outdoor things as the weather warms, and so that will be good because the Mardi Gras colors, green, yellow, or green, gold, and purple, are meant to, to represent all kinds of well, the important things that is on the Mardi Gras shield, I believe. So justice or spirituality is purple. And then um, actually that's green. Well, health and wealth are two of the things that the, co the colors that uh, represent. And they're both the same because your health is your greatest asset. So do take care of yourself. Wear your mask. 
keep socially distancing, washing your hands, keeping your circle of friends small and slightly socially distanced. Keep it safe and simple. Bye for now.